time is now. The moment of truth has arrived. High Point or Seattle. Tonight, we crown a champion in Daytona Beach. And welcome to the Row College Basketball Invitational. Inside the Ocean Center, Daytona, the place to be. As we kickstart your college basketball Wednesday, the CBI Championship is here. The hardware in the building, the giant crystal ball trophy has arrived. High point in Seattle, the one seed versus the three. It is the Big South versus the WAC. Take a look at our bracket and how we got here. How about that game as High Point found a way to survive late against upstart Arkansas State out of the Sun Belt and then Seattle U took it to Fairfield, the three over the seven last night, 75 to 58. Well, championship season has arrived and what a time to be alive here in the month of March. Mark Wise, Roy Pilpak. This tournament means a lot to both of these teams and one of these teams has a chance to cut down the nets. Interesting strengths, High Point is electric offensively, but Seattle is very rugged on the defensive end. Something's got to give. All right, let's talk about the stars tonight, including the Big South freshman of the year who plays like an upperclassman. Jocelyn Bodo Bodo has done everything in Daytona these last uh, couple of days. And at seven feet tall, he simply changes the way the game is played block to block. Bodo Bodo was simply sensational yesterday in that thrilling one point win over Arkansas State. 14 points, 16 rebounds, and six blocks. A national finalist for the Kyle Macy Award. Bodo Bodo, he can impact an opponent on both ends of the floor. Seattle, on the other hand, will counter with one of the elite shooters in the country in Cameron Tyson. He already holds the school record for made threes in a season with 110, and in a career with 312, and in the three wins for Seattle in the CBI, it's been business as usual. Tyson is 13 for 31, that's good for a 42% clip, and Roy, if he gets it going tonight, watch out. He's in the zone, he steps in the arena, and it's going in. Chris Victor, year number eight overall in Seattle, his third season as the head coach of the Red Hawks, 11 and nine in the WAC this year, 22 and 14 overall after this run of brilliance here at the CBI. And Seattle coming off that convincing win against Fairfield, they back that up after a Comeback victory over Evansville. Allen Huss in his first season. High Point, North Carolina, 27 wins, just eight setbacks. The regular season champions in the Big South, 13 and three in that conference. And the Big South Coach of the Year, turning heads in campaign number one with a roster of transfers, including Justin Bodo Bodo, who we told you about, and Kamani Hamilton, who started his career at Mississippi State. And there's Bodo Bodo ready to roll on this championship Wednesday evening. A couple of questions I want to see answered early. Who guards Cameron Tyson for high point? And can Seattle defend without fouling? Yesterday in the semifinals, Roy, they only committed 10 fouls, and high point gets to the free throw line 26 times a game. Contrasting styles, to say the least. High point in the purple unis. Seattle U in the all-white uniforms. Granted, Chatfield. Along with Bodo Bodo, underway at Ocean Center. High point has it first. Trey Benham, the screen from Bodo Bodo. High point does have an arsenal of three point weapons. Their pace and offensive efficiency really at the very top of the leaderboard when it comes to mid major basketball. Top 10 of the country overall. Off the bounce, Theum, the pump fake, the hesitation, and a wild shot that is rebounded cleanly by Chatfield. Well, that's the kind of solid defense that Seattle will play throughout the game. What makes them so good defensively? They take a look at their starting five. Christopoulos and Tyson both, both went for 21 yesterday. They very rarely get beat off the bounce, so they're never in rotations. Victor would like to see a little bit more from Alex Schumacher as Tyson buries his first triple. 3 0, our score just underway. Benham, Jippa, Theum, Hamilton, and Bodo Bodo round out the starting five for the team from the big side. And the back 
and forth action we had yesterday in that first semifinal with Arkansas State and these Panthers from High Point was phenomenal. Hamilton launching and clearing is Riley. Numbers. Shea Riley inside out. Tyson again. That's another three. Chatfield corrals a rebound and a fresh 20. Christopoulos was the master of the mid-range last night. Chatfield, the triple pump fake, he traveled, shifted the pivot foot, and that's a violation. Well, credit that turnover to the X factor in the paint tonight, that's Bodo Bodo. He won't always block shots, but he impacts the game. If you missed the first semifinal, Bodo Bodo impacted the final play. Arkansas State had a clean look from 15 to win it at the buzzer. Taron Todd hit it wide left, not entering the painted area in that restricted area with Bodo Bodo patrolling. Thea bumped on the three and a foul called on Cameron Tyson. Thea, who had such a sensational game against Cleveland State, where he went and made six of nine from beyond the arc. He struggled yesterday. And I was curious who Tyson was going to guard because Tyson did a bang up job on Caleb Fields yesterday. Thea at the line shooting three. High point on the board. Hey, Thiem, 85% free throw shoot. Not far from home, an Orlando native, played at Dr. Phillips. One more coming. The champions of this tournament in years past have gone on to do tremendous things in the following seasons. A different era now with the transfer portal and all those things, but still, history tells you, you make a deep run here in Daytona Beach. Really good things are headed your way in the future. Dangerous skip pass. Stopless fortunate not to turn it over twice. Like you mentioned, Theum, 85% at the line, just goes one for three. Schumacher, the step back and the elbow J, in and out. Rebound controlled by Jippa. Keza Jippa, second leading scorer. I thought Bodo Bodo kind of jammed up the action there. If it doesn't need much real estate to get that shot off, it has been lethal from behind the three-point arc. Well, the runner just pushed it up there, no, and Schumacher clears. Early on, Seattle laying on that left hand of Jeffa. Yeah, Jeffa loves to go left, that is his strength. Tyson, short the baseline jumper. One field goal made so far, the triple by Tyson. Get the scoring started. Liam, a nasty crossover, the pump fake, and the finish. Tied at three. Three minutes in. Kostopoulos outside. Loves the mid-range game this time. Fires it out to Tyson. That's a three. Cannot guard Tyson with your hands down. You've got to be there on the catch, and he's got to be able to see you waving in his face. Forty of those three-pointers coming in the second half last night. It's a victory against Fairfield. Bodo Bodo first touch was stripped, brought it down low, and Chatfield trying to wrestle it away. Bodo oh. Bodo corrals it. That's one, that's one Benham has to make because that would have been the assist of the year. But his backside all the way out to the three-point arc. There are four three-point lines on this court. The darkest one is the one you need to take account of. Chatfield inside, his first bucket. It's eight to three. It's a really good job by Chatfield to catch it in the scoring zone. And Chatfield, not a factor yesterday, would love to improve his production this evening in Daytona. And a bump and a foul, that goes on Schumacher, Schumacher rather, that'll be his first. We talked about attacking Bodo Bodo on the defensive end. Watch Chatfield first where he catches the ball, deep in the scoring zone, and it's a quick definitive move. And Seattle gets out on top here in the CBI final. 
ESPN's exclusive presentation of the Row CBI's Finals. It's brought to you by Row, healthcare made easy, and also by Thumbtack, caring for your home made easy. Download the app today. Beautiful Daytona Beach. Mix of sun and clouds this afternoon, 8-3. to three. three seed Seattle U leading high point. The one seed, Mark Wise, Roy Philpott. We mentioned it previously. You win this tournament, chances are you're going to go on and do some special things. We mentioned Charlotte yesterday, UNC Wilmington. Get a little deeper, Grant McCaslin in North Texas in 2018. Think about what happened in the years after that. Upsets in the NCAA tournament, building a program. Translation, it just means a little bit more if you find a way to win this tournament. And Roy, take a look at the different conferences represented by the winners of this tournament. Out of the timeout, Theum tosses up an air ball out of bounds back to Seattle. Right now, the Seattle defense is dictating the quality of shot for High Point, and it's not very good. Does that surprise you, given High Point's offensive efficiency and pace? Yes, it does, but when you are able to guard the ball without getting beat, when you guard your yard and stay out of rotations, good things happen defensively. Guard your yard, that is postseason material for Mark Wise. You have kept that under wraps the entire year, almost 30 games in. Kobe Williamson checks in for the first time. The land down under, operating at the elbow. Williamson, big man move. It's the chippy. Riley controls the rebound in a fresh 20. There's that energy guy again in terms of Shea Riley. Bodo Bodo on the bench. Seattle needs to attack the rim. Schumacher tried to, and a late whistle foul called against High Point. That'll go on Hamilton. We saw this in the semifinal yesterday. When Bodo Bodo goes to the bench, sometimes High Point will change the way they guard the ball screen action. It's Paris Dawson. He banged up for a moment. Yesterday's semifinal. Tyson was fouled by Thea. And both players went tumbling down. It'll be three free throws for Cameron Tyson. Probably been our most active player to start the CBI championship. I love the activity by Theum defensively in terms of challenging, but your closeout has to go beside the shooter, not at the shooter. He does not allow Tyson to land. That's an almost cylinder infraction, if you will, and puts Tyson and his 87% free throw shooting at the free throw line. How hard is it to teach a player challenge a three-pointer without fouling and this may be the most important graphic you see tonight not only see a two-time all-whack first team selection most importantly cam tyson does possess the best beard in college basketball according <laughs> to your humble play-by-play -play person tonight in daytona beach and check out the beard and tell me that i'm wrong america i'm not i'm not telling you you're wrong i do sense a hint of envy when you say that about him it is well beyond a hint. <laughs> Something I will strive for in the offseason, Professor Wise. What a start for the Red Hawks. Tyson, a couple of threes and the free throws after being fouled on a three-pointer. He's the difference so far, an 11-3 advantage for the team. The Western Athletic Conference. Open look to Jiffa. He took a spill, no foul. And Seattle U has the rebound. I That's love it. In, in advantage. A big wave for the Red Hawks. Mid-range no for Dawson. Good to see Dawson in the game after he took a spill in the semifinals. Good for the bounce pass. Interrupted by Dawson. Boy, what I started to say was, I love the combination of Williamson and Chatfield. They don't play very often on the floor at the same time, but you're talking about Chatfield, who gives you nine and a half and five and a half, and Williamson, who gives you nine and five and a half. So you throw those numbers together, and Seattle gets a lot of production out of that five-man position. Panthers a one for seven start, Hamilton baseline. In and out, the lid remains firmly on that end of the court. Nothing wrong with that look, though. High point has increased its level of defensive tenacity. Coming up with a steal, but it gives it right back to Dawson. 
Christopoulos, boy, that's his spot in the mid-range. Short, no, oh. the rebound, yes, what a maneuver. And a foul called on the perimeter, and right now, Seattle U, that was Rykovic creating extra possessions with this incredible offensive rebound. Their activity level, their energy level right now, and I'm talking about Seattle's, is higher than high points right now. An advantage of plus nine rebounding department. Gustafalos a quick trigger. Confusion on the rebound attempt. Rykovic came up with it again, and Dawson is fouled. I don't know that I've seen a sequence like that in all of college basketball this year, the way that Seattle U has gone about its way, the offensive glass, and coming up with loose basketballs. Today we started looking at how close are these two teams, and we're going to show you just how close when you look at any, whether you're talking about Kim Palm or Nat or BPI, look at how close these two teams are in any rating index that you choose. And I know that the, the guys in Vegas, we've seen it on both sides of the pick'em line. Williamson takes his time, rolls it in. And a 10-0 run. Seattle has not trailed tonight. Williamson doing a really good job of taking away the shot blocker's space. Offensive foul on Kezajipa. Watch Williamson after he catches the ball inside, take away the space of Bodo Bodo and goes into his chest. That's a great finish inside. Did not see a lot of moves inside against Bodo Bodo like that yesterday from Arkansas State. Williamson gives you a little bit more size. At number 33 from Melbourne, Australia. Seattle not shooting the cover off the ball by any stretch, but enough to build a 10-point lead. Christopoulos open for a moment. Too strong. Chatfield, no Rykovic. And he was fouled and pushed out of bounds. This is the second time that Rykovic has been a factor on the offensive glass. He only averages a little more than two rebounds a game. Yeah, it's been dynamite in terms of free throw shooting. A robust 93% free throw shooter this year. I thought of as a magnificent offensive rebounder. Tyson back on the floor. And poked out by Bodo Bodo. He wants a review, but you're not going to review that with 12-17 to go in the half. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Might be a wee bit early. South freshman of the year. Defensive player of the year, Tyson sprung free. And in a sense, high point fortunate to only be down 10 at this juncture. Agreed. If you're Alan Huss, this kind of shooting continues. You tell your team, hey, we played as poorly as we possibly could and we still have a chance. Yeah, but look at Dawson sitting on the left hand of Jiffa. And a foul before the shot. Jiffa was shoved. Brings us to the under 12 media timeout. Seattle U leading high point by 10 here at the CBI Championship. We've had some incredible championship games over the years, especially here in Daytona. Just two seasons ago, how about UNC Wilmington and Middle Tennessee? The Seahawks prevailed. And it came in double overtime with the MVP, Jalen Sims, scoring 28. He made 14 of 15 free throws. And the turnaround for UNC Wilmington was complete, hoisting the trophy after winning four games in four days here at the Ocean Center. Roy, you and I talked about this yesterday. These coaches, when they arrive here, I, I'm not sure they're convinced about the buy-in. But once you, once you play, once you get a win under your belt, I've seen nothing that would suggest anything less than what we saw yesterday and what I'm seeing from Seattle right now. Flat getting after it on the defensive end. And put the clamps down. Benham's open. That's a three. It's short. And the rebound by Theum. He was fouled by Tyson. It's an unfortunate foul on Tyson. You mentioned the defense. This is a program that is built on that brand. Second foul on Tyson. He'll get a breather. That's big. 
Just the threat of Tyson on the floor not being there is big. Panthers too good of a shooting team to not break out of this early slump, but a turnover force. Hamilton stepped out of bounds. Again, active hands being in gaps, not allowing to have to, to allow high point players to go where they want to go. Seattle's defense on point. Redhawks nemesis in the whack has been Grand Canyon University these last two years. High off the glass, Schumacher connects. A good sign for the Redhawks. I love that play by Schumacher because he was controlled. Sometimes I think he goes too fast with the bounce. Six points five times yesterday in the win against Fairfield. Jiffa wide open, a three and an air ball way too strong. Well, one of my questions for you coming in, High Point got that first round by 15 teams invited right. to the CBI this year. Would they have the fresher legs? The answer at this point is not necessarily. An extra game being played by Seattle, and that has not impacted them so far in the first half. Only the wide open. And he buries it. Why not look for early offense as a counter before that defense gets set? And regarding the extra day play, we, we talked about this yesterday. Seattle is a deep team, maybe the deepest team here. Christopoulos oh. swatted at the rim by Bodo Bodo. And a couple of those yesterday that were ruled goaltends to put back on the other end. Wow, Jiffa got crushed in there, no whistle. But Bodo Bodo following up, big guys. Don't assume that every shot's gonna be made. Run the floor, every possession. Little Bodo held in check so far. His first points and his first rebound and an offensive foul on the moving screen. Well, we sure saw a lot of this yesterday. Rim protection by the seven-foot freshman. Let's just get that out of there. And following up on the other end, just be active as an offensive rebounder. Put your, if you want to be a great offensive rebounder, here's my deal. Put the camera down and get in the picture. Don't take the picture. True seven-footer from Cameroon. Duke Miles baseline. Hamilton outside. Three-pointer no. Bodo Bodo, the offensive glass. And tap back to Bodo Bodo, who is hammered. Chatfield clipped him. Again, this is just a freshman at seven feet, athletic, has a great sense for timing on rebounding, has good hands, gathers here not once, but twice. He makes the opposition antsy. <laughs> yes, he makes me antsy. Liam will catch the touchdown pass deep in his own backcourt. I went back to work, now trailing by just seven. And they're just trying to get the fight back in the middle of the ring. Riley nearly forced a turnover. Bodo Bodo tied up by Chatfield, and the arrow gives it back to Seattle. Not easy to tie up a man <laughs> that kind of strength. Jocelyn Bodo Bodo. Take another look. The, the key is Williamson holding his ground. Watch the 33 white Williamson just doesn't give in. And it was Williamson. That is so good defensively. Hanja checking in for the first time for Seattle. Williamson and Bodo Bodo, a matchup to watch the rest of this night. The physicality on display between those two. We talked about Chatfield as well. Entertaining inside. Schumacher to Williamson. The reverse, no. If Bodo Bodo bothered that shot, it goes back to high point. It's great execution and a little two-man game on the bounce pass. Fifteen to eight. Seattle now without a bucket in the last two and a half minutes. High point battling back. Under nine to go in the half. Duke Miles probing. Easy layup on the reverse. How about that? A little Gretzky move all the way around. 
Seven nothing burst by high point. Seattle just two for its last 11. And no sign of Cameron Tyson with the two fouls. Schumacher. Again, that's much better job of probing, not going too far, taking what the defense gives you. I'm sensing a consistent theme when you're talking about Schumacher. Yes. The patience. Make sure he remains under firm control. He has a lot of assists on the year, but he also has a lot of turnovers. See him somehow kept his dribble for a moment. Here's Miles attacking. Bodo Bodo. Jump ball. It'll stay with high point. How about the job by Christopoulos, though, coming from behind. John Christopoulos, a redshirt sophomore from Seattle. Back of the row, CBI Championship, 17 to 10. Seattle U leading high point. Mark Wise, Roy Philpott. A reminder, coming up Friday, ESPN, the place to be. The women's Sweet 16 matchups. Oregon State, Notre Dame will tip the day off at 2.30 Eastern, followed by number one and undefeated South Carolina against Indiana, NC State, Stanford, Gonzaga, and Texas. The nightcap at 10 Eastern Friday. All of those games in the Sweet 16 on ESPN. Back at Ocean Center. Good start for the team from the WAC. High Point trying to battle back. They have trailed by as many as 12 points tonight. That lead has been sliced down to seven. Cam Tyson during that timeout, coach, back on the floor with the two fouls. That's a high level of trust by your head coach. It does feel like Seattle U is a different team with him off the court. Especially on the offensive end. Threat to score from just about anywhere, but especially from deep. Williamson with a pad. Utilized that jump hook. Bodo Bodo the block. And Riley lost it. Here's Duke Miles. Contact, no whistle. Williamson ahead of the pack. Tracks it down outside to Tyson. The new wave of hoops. Why take a two when you can get a three? Smart play by Williamson, really. He knew where Bodo Bodo was. I was impressed that he was able to track the ball down over his shoulders. That was a three for Seattle. It's now 20 to 10. Outside to Miles. Trying to answer no. Riley clears. They're getting pretty good looks. They're just not knocking down shots. Here's Schumacher, the runner. Pushes it up yeah. and down. Oh, yeah, I like that a lot. Playoff two feet. Numeral zero getting it done in the early going, averaging nearly 14 points per game. And he's got six already. That matches his total from the semifinals. Chippa to step back. Riley skies for the rebound in front of Bodo Bodo. But Seattle, again, not getting beat anywhere off the bounce. Tyson off the screen. Oh. Another triple for number five in white. He is on fire. And Seattle seizing control in our first half in Daytona. calls the timeout, but Kobe Williamson moments ago acting like a wide receiver 40 yards <laughs> down the field, and then the dime dropped. Especially knowing that your best three-point shooter is on the wing wide open and then off a little pin down off the ball, Tyson just squares up and play and shoots the three ball, playing with such confidence. You missed the memo on Cameron Tyson. Started his career in Idaho, then transferred to Houston was part of the final four run for Kelvin Sampson's team down south. And then he wanted to come back and play for the home team. You mentioned it at the onset. Riley on the alley-oop, the dime from Williamson again. He is an elite shooter, and Seattle is running some elite offense these last two minutes. No question about it. They're getting whatever they want. They have high point completely discombobulated. Hamilton steps into a three, wide open. Bodo Bodo the offensive glass. And it's been that kind of half for high point. Point blank opportunity. Free throws coming for Bodo Bodo. It's one thing for your big guy to have an assist on a kickout, but how about the little alley-oop pass? And Riley 
finish as the energy guy, but Williamson now with two, I don't know how many assists he has on the year, but he, he's adding them up in a hurry right now. 12 nothing run for the Red Hawks with Bodo Bodo at the strike. That's the one area of his game he would tell you he would like to improve before next season. About a 40% free throw shooter. And checking out is Christopoulos. The, checking in, rather, is Christopoulos. One of the stars yesterday in the semifinals. Red Hawks haven't needed him so far tonight. High point needs more of this man at the line, Jocelyn Bodo Bodo. But Roy, aren't you impressed with Seattle's depth? What they're getting off the bench? Watch Williamson. Watch what Paris Dawson can give you. And then the clamps applied on defense. Williamson, the spin. Riley on the offensive glass. And that's been the story of this half. Extra possessions for Seattle U. Somebody better put a body on 23 and white. 17 point lead. Schumacher thinking about it. Launching no. High point gets it back. Jippa. Had his pocket pick, but he was fouled in the process. Now, this is what you do not want. You don't want to put high point to the free throw line, especially 80 feet from the basket. I love the aggression, but there has to be a certain level of intelligence about where to take your fouls. Jip especially nearly 90% at the line, 88% this year. Daytona State transfer. For five to go, entertaining first half of the CBI Championship. Coming up Saturday, more sweet 16 action headed your way on the women's side. Start on ABC with defending national champion LSU battling UCLA. Caitlin Clark on display, 3.30 Eastern ABC, the place to be against Colorado, then Baylor SC. And Duke and UConn to wrap things up on ESPN. On the Caitlin Clark effect. She is on the ESPN networks. People are watching in terms of millions. Record numbers. Imagine what they're going to look like as we get deeper into the dance. 2-3 zone by High Point. I like the change. Try something different. Christopoulos gets it from Schumacher. Tyson back on the bench for the moment. Christopoulos short. Benham players. I think that's that combo defense that Alan Huss likes to run. And I'll explain that on the next possession. Hamilton to Bodo Bodo against Williamson. Double team, no problem. Man, when his skill set offensively matches his athleticism, my goodness. So here's the combination defense. It's a zone. Bodo Bodo the block. And hey, you don't want to drive in there. Nothing good for you. Riley was in the air for a while. Bodo Bodo starting to become an impact player. And Alan Huss yells in approval. I, li I like the early response offensively. A 6 nothing run for High Point. They're playing for the championship trophy here in Daytona Beach. It is in the house on a Wednesday night. The CBI Tournament flashback. Takes you all the way back to 2011. The title run by Oregon, a young Dana Altman in the house. It's a critical turnover by Creighton. Here comes EJ Singler. Drain this shot for the dub. Oregon grabbed the lead with two seconds left. Went on to beat Creighton 71 to 69. Deep in the woods there in Eugene. Roy, did you see the length of the shorts? in that clip we just showed. The only thing that surprised me there, it was not in standard definition. We had <laughs> one of those, I think, in the first CBI championship <laughs> yesterday with that flashback in 08. It was a uh, crisp picture. 27-16, under four minutes remaining in our first half. Mark Wise, Roy Philpot here at the championship. So this combination defense is, looks like a 2-3, but then they'll try to match up out of it. Trying to keep you off balance. And when you say match up, is that a transition to straight man-to-man? -man? Yes. Williamson collects. No. Williamson blocked by Hamilton. Oh, here comes High Point trying to get back in it. Duke Miles, a quick three. Riley the rebound. Secures it safely. Well, Bodo Bodo has a way, even if he doesn't grab the initial board, 
can sneak in and wreak havoc. Impactful. And a foul call. 35 feet away from the rim. Dawson had it. And that'll be Hamilton second. Roy, I call these practice fouls because all coaches want their teams to play aggressive in practice. And so you get away with much more in practice than you do in games. And then when they get called in the games, guess what? Everybody's going, what? <laughs> Dawson a 75% free throw shooter. Both teams in the bonus. Harris Dawson, the junior from Carson, California. Started his career at Portland State. Go back to comeback win against Evansville. And Chris Victor said it best that it was Dawson that helped provide that spark. Trailing at halftime, they outscored the Purple Aces by 20 in the final 20 minutes. One of two at the line for Dawson. Seems like an important three minutes to finish the half for High Point. Touch pass to Jeffa. Here's Miles. It's Christopoulos, high off the glass, and bangs it in. Really acrobatic finish that time by Miles, who's had a great CBI. He's averaged better than 14 points in their two games. Leading score for high point this season. Williamson for three. He's got that shot in the arsenal, 28% this year. 17-point lead down to 10. Jiffa against Dawson. Well, he shows you an arsenal of moves. Wibbs and rips away the rebound from Bodo Bodo. But what about the job by Dawson holding his ground? Tyson blocked by Hamilton. And the action and the pace starting to pick up. Jiffa the runner. The lead down to eight. Doesn't it seem like high point is better when they play faster? No question about it, coach. Top 10 in the country in offensive efficiency, according to Ken Palm, number eight. And the highest rating of any mid-major program in that department. And part of that is pace. Here's Tyson held in check. Last couple of minutes, Williamson. In and out with a three. And a foul over the back. Who was that one on? It appears high point. And for Hamilton, that's going to be his third. But who's involved in the action again? Take another look. Here's this erase by Hamilton. And then coming up the floor, Jiffa, watch, under control, even though she he goes off one foot. It's early before all that defensive activity gets set for Seattle. That was called on Benham instead of Hamilton. That is a significant call. Shea Riley at the stripe, a 60% free throw shooter. That's the front end of the one and one. A couple of misses at the strike. Austin, Seattle here at the end of the half. Miles to Benham. Outside to Hamilton, steps into a three. And Bodo Bodo lost it. It was last touched by Seattle U. It's like I'm watching Riley and I'm watching Ponja inside, just trying to keep Bodo Bodo off the offensive glass. Job in itself. Hamilton with a pass over Williamson, and he got it to go. I think Williamson got a piece of that, and Hamilton was still able to finish. Notice Tyson off the floor with those two fouls. Christopoulos, no on the three. Bodo Bodo clears the rebound. And a grown man's born at that. High point with momentum at the end of the half. Duke Miles for three. Riley boxed out Bodo Bodo almost the opposite way, and it worked out. Well, high point, you have to feel fortunate. Trailing by 17 off of that ice cold start. Now just a two possession game. Williams in the jump hook. That's just a little quicker. I'm talking about his release a little quicker than Bodo Bodo could react. Shot clock is off. Jiffa off the side of the backboard. Still time for Seattle. 
A clean look for three, and well short from Poncho. And that is how our first half, the Rowe College Basketball Invitational Championship, comes to a close. And it was Cameron Tyson got the job done early. Tyson has made five or more threes in a game 11 times this year. He's one away from making that number 12. Our halftime report is headed your way next from Daytona Beach. 30 to 22, our score. The three seed Seattle never trailed in the first half, leading the top seed, High Point, here at Ocean Center. Welcome back to the Rowe College Basketball Invitational. 20 minutes remaining to determine a champion in 2024. Seattle, the early advantage. High point right back in it after a strong conclusion in the first half. The visitors from High Point, North Carolina. Mark Wise, Roy Philpott, Seattle get the first possession of our second half. And Cameron Tyson on the floor with a two personal foul. Something to watch. He picked up two quick ones, was on the bench to portion the second part of the first half. Red Hawks on the move. Chatfield down low, right in front of Odo Bodo. And whether you're talking about Chatfield or Williamson, they've had some success against Bodo Bodo when they're quick with their finishes. High point survived. Thrilling game yesterday in the semifinals against Arkansas State. 81 to 80 was the final. Bodo Bodo against Chatfield. Powers his way up and in. Take a look at our row of game track. Lead down to eight, three-point shooting. Hasn't been great tonight. Seattle significantly better with those four makes. Well, again, the job that Seattle did on Jeff in the first half, he was just two for 10. As I mentioned earlier, High Point had a total of one assist in the first half. That's all about guarding your man with the ball and not getting beat, winning your individual one-on-one. -on -one. Net at the strike. That's an encouraging sign for High Point. The lead down to seven. Now Seattle has been very good in the second half here in Daytona Beach. Riley challenging Bodo Bodo. And both teams to the deck. What was the call? A foul. I think this Here's is as if it goes on Riley. I agree. How about the activity by Bodo Bodo, though, without fouling? Riley challenges Bodo Bodo. You see his verticality there? That's almost picture perfect. We've seen Shea Riley do that a couple of times tonight. It has not ended well on any of those yeah. occasions. <laughs> 32 to 25. Here's Hamilton. I mentioned Jeffa with those seven points. It came on two of 10 from the floor. Just shot clock at 10. Yeah, it seems like everything High Point is doing, even though Jeffa makes that shot, is east-west. The lead down to four. So a three-point play by Bodo Bodo. The three by Jeffa. Schumacher turns it over. And a kickball violation. Really, High Point didn't have much going. Jiffa just decides on this ball reversal to shoot the three ball. Which line was he behind? Was he all behind all of them? If you want to be safe, that's the way to operate. There's Cameron Tyson. If you're a fan of Seattle U. Schumacher challenging. And we'll shoot a pair. But again, did you see Schumacher kind of peek over his left shoulder to see where Bodo Bodo was? He was peeking and so were we. <laughs> yes. Because Bodo Bodo was waiting, ready to send that into the rafters. Schumacher 77% at the strike. And he gets there a lot because he shot 178 on the year. 
guards who can shoot a lot of free throws, especially those that can make them, that's such a luxury because you're scoring when the clock stops. It's free points. We like free points in yes. basketball, don't we? Two for two. Lead back to six, nearly two minutes into our second half. Luke Miles working hard, picked up by Christopoulos. Now Leigh Theum attacking. Through the double team, here's Bodo Bodo. And off the foot of Williamson with five on the timer. Jiffin will trigger. Duke Miles attacking the paint. Bodo Bodo powers it up and in again. Right in front of Williamson, right before the shot clock expired. Smart decision on the handoff. Williamson, I thought, jumped up too high and helped defending. High point trying to flip the script on Seattle in terms of second half production. Cameron Tyson finally gets a touch against Duke Miles. In and out, Briley on the offensive glass, high up and in. I think Briley now in double figures and rebounding in this game. The energy guy, the effort guy. He gave a quick sneak peek to make sure Bodo Bodo was on the <laughs> weak side, and he was. And he proceeded quickly. Hamilton left open, corner three. Bodo Bodo against Williamson, tied up. No, a foul was called in free throws for Jocelyn Bodo Bodo. Let's go back a couple of possessions ago and watch Bodo Bodo. See his hands are out. I love that as a big guy. So many times big guys have their hands by their side, but he put them out as a receiver. And then on this last play, Bodo Bodo took advantage of the air ball. I always think the air balls are really difficult to rebound. Another Bodo Bodo double-double. Easy for me to say. One more free throw coming. He got off to a bit of a slow start as Dawson checks back in. And then really started to catch fire at the end of the half. Big South Freshman of the Year, Defensive Player of the Year in that same conference. One of two. High point trailed by as many as 17 in the first half tonight. Schumacher to Tyson, free for a moment. And was drifting left, the shot went left. Buccaneer makes it a one possession game. Outside to Hamilton, passed up the three against Williamson. I love the ball fake. That's one of the few times I feel like High Point actually attacked at the rim toward the basket. Schumacher was bumped by Jiffa. Keza Jiffa just picked up his third. High Point played with Jiffa last night in foul trouble. Here's the ball fake, splitting defenders. That's just an acrobatic finish for a very gifted athletic wing in Kamani Hamilton. Cameron Tyson, Williamson down low. Look at this matchup. In and out, Williamson gets it back against Bodo Bodo again and was clipped. Boy, that one-on-one -on -one matchup has been scintillating tonight. Talk about a game within the game. In this tournament, Seattle has been so good in second halves. How good? Well, take a look at these numbers, especially that bottom one. Their three-point percentage goes from 22% to 54%. They tack on 15 more points in second halves. They've just simply been sensational every second half in this tournament. Has not been the case so far tonight. Give High Point credit for making their halftime adjustments. 
Sargunas checking in as Theum gets a breather for high points. But Theum out, Jiffa out, two of the better defenders on the perimeter. Now who's gonna guard Tyson? It most likely will be Miles. Lead back to five, four minutes into the second. High point has been the aggressor. Bodo Bodo has been a main reason why to start the second half. Hamilton as well. Sargunas baseline. Benham left wide open. That's a three. What a great driving kick, though. That's one you can live with. Trey Benham, 37% from deep this year. Oh, oh, oh. That shot by Tyson was blocked by Bodo Bodo. Now he's blocking shots like Anthony Davis did. And the three from the corner, no, by Dawson. Now Seattle has cooled off tremendously. Tyson has as well. He's been stuck on 15 points for about the last 10 to 12 minutes of game time. But Roy, Bodo Bodo blocked that shot. That was a 15-foot mid-range jumper. Duke Miles. And a blocking foul called as the bucket count. And it does. Five minutes into the second half, here comes High Point, a one possession game. The CBI Championship. One possession game, back of the Rowe College Basketball Invitational. Mark Wise, Roy Philpott, hard to believe, but opening day has arrived, as in tomorrow. And right here on ESPN, we will have the defending World Series champs, the Texas Rangers, hosting the Chicago Cubs. It is our opening night game at 7.30 Eastern, exclusively on ESPN, ESPN Deportes, ESPN Radio. Also on the ESPN app, it is year number 35, broadcasting MLB on ESPN. And don't forget, coverage starts the one-hour baseball tonight that will also include the banner-raising ceremony at 6.30 Eastern, 5.30 Central. Metroplex place to be tomorrow night. Craig Council making his managerial debut for my Cubs. Your Cubs. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, at least you have one championship in the last century <laughs> to feel good about. Miles, three the hard way on a bang bang play that could have gone either way. You and I looked at each other when the whistle was blown. We thought maybe that was going to be an offensive foul. Yeah, I thought Miles dislodged the defender. Schumacher lucky to keep his dribble alive. Also took a shot in the face, and Williamson called for the offensive foul. Yeah, I don't agree with this one either. Williamson was set, and after there's contact made, then he's allowed to move. Panthers have flipped the script. They have been the dominant team in the second half, outscoring high point 14 to 8. And a basket here. Could mean the first lead of this game for the Panthers. Sargunas. Miles against Dawson. Denham for the lead. Bodo Bodo on the offensive glass. Sargunas for the advantage. And an air ball that is claimed by Benham. And these were the kinds of possessions Seattle was getting in the first half. Miles, Bodo, Bodo. And swipe by Williamson. That foul on the floor on 33 and White. Roy, I'm telling you right now, Miles really didn't shoot that shot. He just wanted to get it up on the other side so Bodo, Bodo could go get it. What a smart play. And it makes sense when you look at number of rebounds so far for Bodo Bodo, 13 and counting. High point in the bonus with 14 minutes to go. That plays right into the hands of Alan Huss. He loves a game like that. Yeah, they average 26 free throws a game and make 78% of them. They live at the line. One of the top marks in America, Hamilton turns it over. Sarguna Sig, he was expecting a Zach. Now the question for the Red Hawks, where does its offense come from after been stymied for more than two and a half minutes? I'm, I'm going to number five, when in doubt. Schumacher 
free throw line jumper, no. Miles bumped. So you got to call. Finally, a foul call. Yeah, you got to call those. So the third on Schumacher. Miles back to the line. High point shooting free throws the rest of this half. I mean, when you look at the roster, Miles 88% at the line, Jiffa 88, Hamilton 79, Theum 85, Benham's 87. This is an elite, elite free throw shooting team. Front end of the one and one, Miles. Been outstanding this year. Leading scorer for high point. Transfer from Troy. And was named the Big South Newcomer of the Year in the process. You mentioned the free throw shooting. It is on point. Tied at 38. And because of that free throw shooting, according to Ken Palm, their raw offensive efficiency number, number eight in the country. Christopoulos has yet to score in this game. Tyson having to work for every inch against Duke Miles. And the step back with a baseline. There it is. Much needed bucket for Seattle. That is just tasty. He didn't even push off. He just utilized his footwork. Blocked by Chatfield. Free throws coming again for Duke Miles. Take another look at the way Tyson creates space by utilizing a spin. Off the bounce, spin, create the space, knock down the mid-range jumper. That's big time. Miles has nine. Has not missed at the charity strike. Roy, let's also remember that Alan Huss's team is doing this with Jiffa and Theum on the bench. He helped get the Panthers here. They have utilized Bodo Bodo and now Duke Miles to generate the offense in this comeback. One point tonight, it was 27 to 10 and Sargunas guilty, the body bump. More practice fouls. And the high point bench starting to erupt. Momentum clearly on the side of the Panthers and Allen Huss. Tyson a touch, brilliant lob to Chatfield. Well, that's one way to get past the big man, the seven-footer Bodo Bodo. Grant and Chatfield's gonna shoot a pair. I'm not sure how Bodo Bodo got caught fronting there. You don't want him to front. You want him to be the rim protector. So the lob over was there. Take another look. Bodo Bodo steps in front to deny. I, I don't want my shot blocker fronting. 68% at the line is Chatfield. One more coming. Transfer from Washington State, working on his form between shots. And Chip is back on the floor as well for high point. Well rested, we might add. All the analytics, all the metrics told you coming into this game, the championship was bound to be close. Didn't feel that way to start. It is now. Basket means high point grabs its first lead. Hamilton, Bodo, Bodo, right in the wheelhouse. Panthers are out in front. How impressive is that freshman? Short roll to the hoop, caught a difficult pass and finished. Ison open for a second. Couldn't get the shot away. Rykovich has it baseline. Pump fake. Chatfield kept it alive somehow. Here's Tyson for three. And Miles lost it out of bounds.
take another look. There's the short roll, the catch in traffic, the finish in traffic. And down on the court remains Keza Jiffa. And slow to get up. So a pause in the action here in Daytona Beach. High point. Trailed at one point in this game, 27 to 10, but it's basketball and it's the CBI. And everybody makes a run and the Panthers have their first lead at 42 to 41. We'll step aside, 12.08 remaining. The CBI tournament flashback features the 2010 championship by VCU. Joey Rodriguez helped VCU sweep St. Louis in the championship series with 13 points. Final score in the championship tilt, 71-65. Guess what happened for Shaka Smart and VCU the next year? How about a run from the first four to the final four, one season after winning the CBI? And Shaka's team is still playing in the Sweet 16 this year. So they did review the three-point attempt by Cameron Tyson check to see if anything suspicious went down with a leg kick or contact by the shooter. It did not. Seattle maintains possession. Tyson remains on the floor. Schumacher was open for a moment. Christopoulos still without a point. He would love to change that here. He falls down and turns it over. 21 yesterday in the semi, scoreless so far in the title game. To me, the difference maker in the second half has been Duke Miles along with Bodo Bodo. And you mentioned the free throw percentages favoring high point. The disparity developing there. Miles, a big reason why against Christopoulos, up and in. And Miles delivers yet another runner off two feet. Panthers with the lead, Rykovic has it. Where is Cameron Tyson? Deep three-pointer on the way. In and out and back in. Miles got caught going for the steal, didn't get it. Wild sequence there for five and white. Now with 20 points. Seattle was just one for its last eight from the floor. That shot contested and rushed, and it still dropped. Being back on the floor, shot clock down to five. Kamani Hamilton, the spinner. Oh! How did he even see the rim, or did he see the rim? Schumacher, the reverse. Well, he snuck around Bodo Bodo before he could figure out what was going on. I think he looked at Bodo Bodo and thought he was coming at him, and so he went to the opposite side. Nice finish by him, under control. How about the pace in this one the last few minutes. Love it. Jiffa with a path, the floater. Rykovic had the rebound, and the foul will be caught on Bodo Bodo. Nothing easy about that board. Take another look at this Hamilton finish late in the clock. He peaked at it, but he peaked awfully late. When the shot was beginning to be hoisted there, <laughs> he was not lucky in that direction. <laughs> that was high point six foul, so now the Red Hawks will be in the bonus. As a coach, does that change your approach and what call? Absolutely. More drives. Tyson Let's... a quick trigger. And another three. Miles relaxed just for a second. And then it's another pin down opposite the ball. Another game with Cameron Tyson securing more than five threes made. Six of ten. Chizza. No. And the putback, yes. As a Jeffa made his move. And then the foul called inside a chance for three. The development of Bodo Bodo, knowing when to get involved on the offensive glass. And even though Giles doesn't, excuse me, Jeffa doesn't make the shot, 
it does attract the big over into a help situation. How about another monster double-double for Bodo Bodo? 16 and 14. Yesterday, he had 14 and 16. Closing in on his career best performance. It's the free throw, tracked down by Tyson. Halfway home in our second half. How entertaining has this game been? Schumacher to Tyson. Low dribble. And tapped out. Shea Riley had possession for a moment and was fouled in the process. Sargunas picks up the personal. Now free throws for Seattle after the 17 foul. At times, it seems like there are two number 23s in white on the floor because Riley is everywhere. There's something about that rim and <laughs> shots spinning down. Riley gets the first, and now the bonus. Wild swings of momentum tonight. Pro CBI Championship game. More confident stroke for Shea Riley. Seattle led by eight at halftime. High point battle back to grab a three point advantage moments ago. Red Hawks have responded, and Riley's going to be called for the foul. Again, the players now have to know that the officials are calling these fouls, so you've got to quit. Everybody want, doesn't want a lot of whistles. Well, here's what my answer to that is. Stop fouling. A simple explanation. Hamilton at the line. Shooting two is high point now, the double bonus the rest of the way. Mentioned the Sweet 16. All gets underway Friday, Women's Basketball Championship. Oregon State Notre Dame starts off the party at 2.30 Eastern. Indiana undefeated South Carolina, the four versus the one at five. NC State, Stanford, Gonzaga, and Texas. Four pack of games in the Sweet 16 Friday. All those contests on ESPN. Two of two for Hamilton, clutch. Seattle lead is just one. Pace has been chaotic at times in our second half, and then it has come to a screeching halt at times with the free throw shooting contest for both sides. Breather for Bodo Bodo. And out of bounds back to High Point. Chatfield came up empty. There wasn't any reason to have that harpoon of an attempt with Bodo Bodo nowhere on the floor. Do you know how hard it is as a coach, and I'm talking about Alan Huss, to, to know how impactful Bodo Bodo is and yet know that he needs a breather? Tough to take him off the floor. Jiffa set to shoot two. Chatfield just picked up his fourth, so Chatfield with four and Kobe Williamson with four and Bodo Bodo being tended to. So take a look at that ankle. Don't get a well, how, taping. However they taped it pregame, they need to tape it the exact same way. Tied at 51. Alan Huss would agree with that. Tied at 51, Jiffa, one more. Drained them both. High point back in front after a 4-0 burst. Tyson tried to clear his way down the court. But it's awfully difficult to try and make field goals on one end and give up free throws on the other. Schumacher off glass. Everything about this game suggests it is coming down to the wire.
Hamilton had the pass deflected. Benham outside. And now Jippa. There's a Jippa. Directing traffic. Got to go. Deep three. And save to Hamilton. And Williamson just fouled out. And let's see, that was close to a shot clock violation, Coach. Yeah, I think they'll have to look at this for the timing. Meanwhile, I think that's Riley that's down with another effort play. Well, a lot to unpack during this timeout. 7.40 to go, and Seattle leads high point by one. Take it back to 2016, the CBI Championship. The must bus in Reno. Nevada's head coach, Eric Musselman, gets the job done. And the first national postseason tournament championship for any team in the history of the Mountain West Conference. And it was CBI MVP Tyron Criswell. As Nevada defeated Moorhead State in an epic three-game clash that culminated in that finale of 85-82. Kobe Williamson just fouled out a review of that last sequence. Shot clock should have reset on the three by Jeffa. It did graze the rim, and so the foul counts. Williamson's night and his season comes to a close. Now let's take another look. The shot clock did not reset. There's no question that the Jeffa three hits the rim right there. And that should have gone back. Saved by Tyson Wright to Hamilton. Yeah, you don't want to foul on Williamson. That means free throws. Tyson should not have thrown the ball back under his own basket. Talk about a tough set of events for Seattle. Coming in first time tonight. It's Goma. 24 in white. For the Red Hawks as Hamilton will shoot two. 53 all, 740 to go. Here in the row, College Basketball Invitational Championship. And Hamilton approaching double figures with one more free throw. He'll get there, and he does. High point back in front. So a game that is featured now. Seven ties and five lead changes. See, this is interesting. Miles is almost face guarding Schumacher. They do not want Schumacher to run the offense. Miles picks him up. Schumacher with the left hand, throws it oh. in. Well, a crafty maneuver. That had a little explosiveness to it. Coaching seven minutes to play. Schumacher with 14 points. He scored six yesterday in the semis. Isolation. That was Hamilton against Goma, who's on the floor for the first time in this championship. Jiff to Miles, probing the baseline. And Riley skies for the rebound. Miles comes away with a steal, and the possession arrow favors high point. Boy, the hustle of 23 in purple cannot be stated enough. Take another look, a pair of 23s, if you will. One for each team, here's the tough two. The miss, Riley secures the rebound, doesn't see that Miles is hanging, hanging around. And the two 23s tie each other up. Miles was trying to get a timeout. Breather. Chatfield for the moment, and the runner, Hamilton. Spinning, hanging, and connecting. So gifted as an offensive player. Monty Hamilton started his career at Mississippi State, now at high point in the Big South. Miles nearly forced another turnover of Schumacher. Cam Tyson contested three, and it drops. Oh. Alan Haas just looks at him. He says, what, what can we do? What can we do about a shot like that? You know what they call that play offensively? Number five, run number five. Worked out pretty well for Seattle. Another triple for Cam Tyson, coach. 
Tyson doesn't need any room. He just creates a little bit of space. That is a pure shooter. It's getting late in Daytona Beach. 6-12 remaining, a two-point game. Mark Wise, Roy Philpott, as we take a look at tonight's Barbasol. Close shape play of the game. Coach, I don't know that I've seen a shot, especially a three, go in the way that this three by Cam Tyson went in. The close miss by Miles going for the steal. That leaves an open look for Cam Tyson, and he delivers one of his seven three-point makes on the evening. That is a season best seven triples. And the ball touched every millimeter yes. of the rim as it spun down and through the net. Seattle with a two point lead. High point has had momentum on its side. It feels like most of this half after the Red Hawks raced out to a 17 point lead at 27 to 10. It's been nip and tuck. Seven ties, eight lead changes. Bodo Bodo back on the floor. The ankle retape and he is good to go. Duke Miles always under control. Jiffa has it. And around the left edge, he'll whip it over to Duke Miles. Gets Camp Tyson. Great matchup here. The pump fake, and Miles was bumped. That's an easy call on the reach. So many times we talk about offensive patience. There's also such a thing as defensive patience. Take another look. Miles has nothing going. Just challenge straight up. That's a foul. You've got to protect the shooters. You can see the touch of the forearm on the uh, release. The forearm was grazed, and that will be the third on Riley. Duke Miles, an 80% free throw shooter. He has been money tonight. High Point took seven free throws in the first half, and this is number 16 in the second half. Miles remains perfect until that miss. 58-57. Five and a half minutes remaining in the championship of the CBI. Schumacher to Tyson, and the lob is poked away by Bodo Bodo. Bodo Bodo actually shaded for Tyson first and then recovered to knock that lob opportunity. In your mind, was Tyson going to shoot that before no, Bodo that, Bodo? Okay. That was a lob. He saw Bodo Bodo coming at him, and yet Bodo Bodo was quick enough to still release and get back and impact the play. And the lob from Schumacher sails out of bounds. And Riley says, I'm not sure what exactly was going on there, big man. That might have been a good play with five minutes to go in the first half, but not now. Crunch time has arrived. Seattle protecting a one-point lead for the moment. Here's a Jiffa. 12 points tonight with possession, one in purple. And they're trying to isolate Miles with Dawson on him. Physical game, Miles. Bump Dawson, the shot clock at 10. Between the legs and an offensive foul will be called. And the Seattle bench erupts. They've been waiting on that whistle all night. And for Miles, he just picked up his fourth personal. That's just hard work by Dawson. Not allowing Miles a driving angle to get by him. Sarkunas going to check back in. A breather for Duke Miles. Miles with 14 points, the four fouls. Game that has become very physical, especially in this second half. A lot of bumps. Schumacher connects with a mid range. So the long two drops for numeral zero. In a game like this, in a tight game like this, who's willing to take and make big shots? Jeffa off the glass. Bodo Bodo corrals the rebound. Well, Benham wanted it. Dawson with an outstanding closeout. Has a Jeffa the crossover, shows, releases. 
Cameron Tyson a rebound. And for a moment, the Red Hawks will take a deep breath. And Jeppa just picked up the foul. That'll be his fourth. So Jeppa and Miles with four personals, four minutes remaining, Coach. I talked about being a big time shot maker in crunch time, Schumacher with a little step back between the legs. And Seattle up three late. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the Row CBI Finals is brought to you by Row. Healthcare made easy. And also by Barbasol. You're looking good, America. You're shaving with Barbasol. Close shave, America. Close shave, Barbasol. The waves crashing down the Atlantic Ocean here at Daytona Beach inside the Ocean Center. Three point game, four minutes to go. The hardware in the house and set to be handed out moments from now. The question is, coach, who wants it? You know, Roy, in a tight game like this, so often it comes down to half-court possessions. The game kind of slows. So maybe which team can find early offense and which team can get some stops? Schumacher, a 77% free throw shooter. And then one and one coming out of the timeout. Drops it in. Coming up Saturday, the Sweet 16 continues in the Women's NCAA Championship. Two games on ABC, UCLA, LSU, Caitlin Clark in Iowa, a one seed against Colorado, and two more on ESPN at 5.30 and 8, Baylor and USC, followed by Duke and UConn as the Sweet 16 concludes Saturday afternoon. How about Schumacher making a tough two, making a couple of free throws in crunch time? And admittingly, I turned to you during the break after he made the mid-range shot. I said, that was surprising. Jippa missed the chippy, Bono Bono. Now it's the first time Jippa was able to get to his left this entire game. Justin Bono Bono just tied his career high with 18. High ball screen for Schumacher. And the push off, an easy call. That's an offensive foul. Yeah, that was obvious to everyone. Well, Schumacher and Jippa have played that tagging game tonight, and those two guards have endured a lot of physical contact in the last two ball games. They have been uh, back and forth. High Point will look to get Jiffa into the paint off the bounce, or they will isolate Miles offensively. Duke Miles on the floor with the four fouls. Kobe Williamson has already fouled out for Seattle. Jiffa also with four persons. 62 to 59. Miles off the cut. Trying to hammer home Tyson under the backboard to Hamilton. Timer down to seven. Outside to Hamilton. And now Jeff up for the tie. Yes! How about the patience offensively by High Point? Making the extra pass not once, but maybe three times. Five-point lead has been erased. Tyson was hammered by Hamilton. And now Seattle to shoot two. Again, to have the patience to know what the shot clock is on. There's the extra pass. Here's the second extra pass. And Jeffa knocks down his third three-pointer of the night. He has a Jeffa with 15. Tyson at the line. Jiffa snuck in. He will be replaced by Miles last minute after Tyson is set to shoot the free throw. Cameron Tyson mentioned his career spanning two schools before returning home to Seattle. First at Idaho, then at Houston. Final four run with Kelvin Sampson. Originally from Bothell, Washington. Came back home to Seattle and extends the Red Hawks lead to two. Well, you and I have seen some great games leading into the semis yesterday. This one falls in that same category again. Miles against Tyson. 
Trying to draw the foul, didn't need it. I talked about isolation for Miles. That's exactly what High Point ran. The defense was marvelous. Deep Miles with 16, tied at 64. Schumacher behind the back, the spin, the floater, yes! Carrying this team down the stretch in the mid-range. Miles outside to Chippa, the response! High point with a lead! How much fun is this? 67-66. Schumacher, Chatfield for three. Oh, he trained it! And a whistle after the three went in. Chatfield, not who you would expect from the top of the key, a 25% three-point shooter this year. Just his ninth made three on the season. And they'll stop play after the triple. One more look at what happened moments ago. Here's the spin move and the finish by Schumacher. And then Jiffa with the response on the inside out action offensively. And then Chatfield, who is eight for 32 on the year. And no problem. Line drive down and went. Chatfield got it done. By the way, in this game, in this championship, Mark Wise, these two teams have combined to hit their last 10 shots in totality. Yeah, fun stuff, no question about it. Let's go back and take a look at what they're looking at on the monitor after the three-point shot was made. They're checking to see potentially if there was a hook and hold on the rebound on the right side of your screen. You be the judge. Boy, it looked like they were both tangled up. Yeah. You want to be a college referee? Start with this play. In a one possession game in a championship contest, 96 seconds to go. Here's another look. They get tangled up. And it's Riley that ends up getting ripped down at the end, but the initial contact felt like that he yeah. was more of the one that was the guilty party. Initially, but then it's Jiffa who kind of pulls him to the ground. Well, this veteran officiating crew, Mike Evans, Mike Kitts, Helen Milliner, talking things over right in the heart of that CBI logo near midcourt. And this is a very big decision in a one possession game. In my view, I think this is a flagrant one on Jiffa. I think that's the debate they're going to have. We're about ready to find out. So you nailed it. The flagrant foul will be called on Keza Jiffa in that sequence, the hook and hold. That's a big call and a big moment right after Chatfield's three gave uh, Seattle the lead right back. And it also becomes Jiffa's fifth foul. So he's going to be out of the game. And this will be two free throws and the ball on the F1. Oh, a potential five point possession and counting for Seattle U, the biggest call of this tournament. stand corrected it's two shots but not the ball so Jeffa fouls out with 18 since there was no call made that flagrant one becomes at the point of interruption when you resume play. So that's the reason why there'll be two free throws, but it will be high points ball. And how about Riley as a 60% shooter, alone on the island, shooting the free throws. The roll on the second one, Shea Riley. 
Eight points, four or five at the line tonight. None bigger than those two attempts. And let's see, Seattle thinking that it has possession. Yeah, we just, do. we just asked that question. Oh, it's the left to Riley, and there it is! What a play! The three by Chatfield, the free throws by Riley, and the alley-oop. That's a seven-point possession. Seattle grabs the rebound. An unbelievable turn of events here in the championship. What a sequence of plays. 73-67 approaching a minute to go. And literally, seconds earlier, I pointed grab the lead. Schumacher with five on the timer against Bodo Bodo. High off the glass and he will shoot a pair. My goodness. How good has Schumacher been lately? Here's the out of bounds play. Riley cuts to his left, comes back to the right. The lob is on point. There's Riley cutting left, coming back right, getting a screen. What an out under call by Chris Victor and the Seattle staff. Mark, have you ever seen an outburst like this? No. In a championship game at high point in position just seconds before. Schumacher at the line, a 77% free throw shooter. Has not missed tonight. And in the span, less than a minute, potentially a 9-0 run. Has Schumacher delivered down the stretch or what? The first half, it was Cameron Tyson. The second half, Alex Schumacher, the senior. Sargunas for three. Riley clears. And with less than a minute remaining, Seattle U sensing this one could be theirs. If you're high point, you got to foul at some point. And finally, Sargunas commits the infraction. An unbelievable finish here in Daytona. And when we talked to Chris Victor yesterday, he talked about giving the players the opportunity to decide whether or not they wanted to come to the CBI. And they felt like there was unfinished business, the, the bad taste in their mouth, the fact that they played here in the semis in 2015 and lost to Loyola, that they thought they could do something that this program has never done. On the verge of doing exactly that. One more for Tyson. Benham checks back in. Sargunas goes out. Williamson fouled out early. All smiles now on the Seattle bench. They can breathe for a moment. 26.9 seconds remaining. The lead at 10, and I mean it went down in the blink of an eye. But Roy, has this game delivered, though? No question. The NIT quarter is coming up next. UNLV and Seton Hall. An ending for the ages, especially if you're a fan of the Red Hawks. And that will do it. 77 to 67. Chris Victor, Alan Huss, what a game. What a tournament in Daytona Beach. And the Red Hawks out of the whack are your 2024 CBI champions. Well, I know that in the end, Cam Thomas, Cam Tyson had 28 points, but the guy that delivered down the stretch of the game is Alex Schumacher, who finished with 22 on eight of 11 shooting, making all six of his free throws, throwing in four rebounds and four assists along the way. Seattle U ends the game on an 11 to nothing run, as you see Alex Schumacher, our ZOA Energy Drink player of the game. And the CBI championship goes to Seattle U and the great Northwest. It's interesting because Seattle got the lead in the first half with their defense, but they won it down the stretch with their offense. Alex Schumacher, the difference. Cameron Tyson poured in 30. Reason to celebrate. Seattle U gets it done. They are your CBI champions in 2024.
UNLV Seton Hall headed your way right now with Derek Jones and Perry Clark.